Lord, we thank you for your word that you have spread before us even now. As we enter into the word, we humble ourselves and we receive the unction that your grace bestows. We ask for your unction to flow from that pure chalice. Let every heart be captivated. Open our eyes. Enlighten our understanding. Strengthen us from within and without. By that grace. By that unction that comes from your grace. So that we will be doers of not, and not hearers only. I pray that your power will flow. Be released in sufficient measure. So that wherever these words are heard and released in all the earth. It will bring deliverance. It will bring healing. It will bring freedom from sin and the dominion thereof. So that your people will become doers and not hearers only. I further pray for mercy. So I will deliver the word faithfully. Redeem the time and say only what you want me to say. Bringing out treasure of this word, things new and old. As a scribe instructed unto the kingdom. In Jesus name. Amen. If you are in agreement with everything I mentioned in that prayer in your individual life. Agree with me and say. Amen. Yeah, individually. The word amen means so be it. It's actually two things in one. It's an affirmation. Amen, so be it. And it's an agreement. So it, uh, that's why when people pray you need to listen. And don't say amen to something you don't agree with. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, this afternoon I have a very important message. It is actually like a, a continuation of my message on um, preparing the glorious church. Uh, it's an amplification of some of the points we made uh, on that message and some of the other messages we heard. Pastor Kunli also shared with us uh, the Bible study last week and uh, the Holy Spirit blew it up in my mind and in my heart. I've never heard this message before that I'm going to minister to you. I got excited on it as I know the Holy Spirit you know, gave it to me and it's, uh, I've never heard it before. Never heard it before. All my years as a Christian, I've never heard anything like this before. Well, of course I've heard, you know, but in the way in which the Holy Spirit has brought it out to me. And it is so, one, is simple. Two, is crucial. When you understand it, and then we begin to actually practice it. And I've entitled it, The Parts, The Joints, and The Bands of the Body of Christ. Everybody say, Parts, Joints, and bands of the body of Christ. It's a great truth that has not been um, emphasized and illuminated as much as it should be. But because the perfect church is being prepared, this knowledge, this epignosis, the word epignosis, the Greek word means precise, exact, complete knowledge, of the functioning of the body of Christ as parts, joints, and bands has become crucial because that is how the perfect church is going to come about and just as importantly, if not more importantly, maintained. You see, uh, the body of Christ is made up of all born-again Christians both in heaven and on earth. We have some of the family has already gone home, gone, gone to heaven. Some of us are still here. Now, it is us who are here that are more important now because of the work we have to finish on the earth before Jesus comes. And it's very important for us to have an understanding of our 
interconnectivity and our interdependence. Many Christians are totally ignorant of this. You find Christians trying to, you know, do things by themselves, you know, and think, you know, they don't, they, they, they don't owe allegiance to anybody. One of the big problems in the church today is that because there's been, particularly in Nigeria, but this is not only true of Nigeria, it's true of a lot of places, you know, but particularly in Nigeria, there's been a proliferation of churches. You, you can hardly throw a stone in Nigeria and not hit a church. If you go down the road now, you will see some buildings. You have about six churches in that building. One on floor one, one on the other side, the other one on floor two. You know, maybe a block of six flats. Each flat is a church. Is that a good thing? Yes and no. Good because Christ is preached. So it's good. Let's give the Lord a clap offering for that. Bad because many times the motive for starting those churches are not pure. They do it for money, for ego, title, and so on and so forth. But nevertheless, you know, that's the thing about God you have to understand. God will use it. I said this many years ago, and I'm going to repeat it now. You know, you know God can use you and never make you. I'm going to repeat it. I preached it years ago. I haven't said it in recent times. God can use you and never make you. It's a profound statement. Let me give an extreme example. It's extreme, but it's true. You know, you know God used the donkey. Yes. He spoke to Balaam through the donkey. But before, during, and after, it remained a donkey. He used the donkey, but he never made the donkey. The donkey's nature never changed. So God can use you. Gifts of the Spirit. Miracles, but never make you. See, God is not just interested. God is not a user. God doesn't just want to use people. He wants to make us. Make us what? Like him. Make us like Jesus. What is the use of God using you if God doesn't make you? You know, God, <laughs> I'm going to give you another extreme. It just came to me now by the Spirit. God used Judas. Mm but never made him. One of the ironies of history is Judas Iscariot goes to hell. But Judas Iscariot carried the borrowed anointing. Mm -hmm. He was one of the twelve. The Bible says, and Jesus called his twelve apostles after praying all night. He chose twelve and they followed him. Then after about six months or so, he said, and he, he, he in Luke chapter 9, he said, and he called the twelve and he gave them power. To cast out devil, including Judas. And the Bible, watch this. The Bible says, and they went out and preached everywhere and came back and said, Lord, even the devils are subject okay. unto all to die, including Judas. He was used, he was never made. So don't just be so excited about God using you. Be more excited about God making you. Amen. You should have both. As he's making you, he's also using you. Yeah. But it is not good for you to be used and not to be made. Uh. But you know, if you're stubborn and rebellious, God will use you and will never make you. He'll just use you. Because you didn't allow him to make you. It's not that he doesn't want to make you. But your stubbornness and your pride and your rebellion and your arrogance makes it difficult. So he said, he doesn't want to be made. Okay, let's use him. Because God needs as many people as he can get in this end time. So anything you put into his hand, he will use. It's true. It's true. That's why we have this proliferation of churches. To get back to my point. So today, if you go to a scripture pastor now, and I say something you don't like, you just leave my church. Hello? No, don't leave. Oh. <laughs> I'm not saying you should leave. But what I'm saying, that's what happens. You know why? Because there are alternatives. If you start talking about uh, consecration, sons of Isika, sons of Isika, sons of Isika, sons of Isika, sons of Isika. It's the truth. Yeah, sons of Isika. You know, 
Tell me I'm going to get breakthrough. I'm going to say they're saying sons of Isika. I'm going to another church where they'll give me breakthrough. Oh, you can. And many have. And many are still doing it. You know why? We have no appreciation of joints, bands, and parts. We think we can do what we like. We do not forget that we are placed in the body. Not by ourselves, but by the God who placed us. I'm going ahead of myself. And this one, you know, I'm always, I, that's why I always like church. Because I always preach what I didn't write. I'm just about to say something like this. Do you know that it was God who led Ruth to Boaz's field? At the time, watch this. Ruth didn't know. Boaz didn't know. Naomi didn't know. Mm. The only person that knew was God. None of them knew. Boaz did not know. Naomi did not know. Ruth did not know. But God had a plan. Now imagine Ruth saying she will do her own thing. I know. Boaz... Ruth, Ruth, you know, she comes, the whole Bethlehem knows about the story of Ruth and how she is faithful to her mother-in-law and everything. So the whole town was moved. Naomi said, don't call me, her name is Pleasant. She said, don't call me Pleasant, call me Bitter. I went out uh, full, I came back empty. My husband, I lost my husband and I lost my two sons. There was this Moabitish girl that followed me. You know, she didn't, she didn't even really value Ruth as much initially. She valued her later. You know, and they came down, they came into town. So the whole town got to know the story. So um, Ruth now says, uh, Naomi, please, let me go out. We can't just sit down here and die of hunger. I'll go to a way that they didn't harvest of uh, barley. Let me go and see where I can get some corn so we can. It was just a natural thing. But God is ruling in the affairs of men. Be very careful. You see, things that you just think are just, just happen. They didn't just happen. God had a plan. There is not one of you that came to this church that came by yourself. Amen. I'm looking at so many of you. I'm looking at Loladi and Sherry. I'm looking at um, the MCM. All of us, Pastor Buega, you know, at the time you came, I didn't know. You didn't know. Only God knew. But there was a purpose. You know why? Bethlehem was the place of destiny. Oh. Hallelujah. Ruth could not just go anywhere. Yeah. So she comes to Bethlehem. She goes to go and harvest. And she's walking from morning. It so happens. You see, when you read the Bible, it didn't just it's God who arranged everything. But at the time they didn't know. Boaz happens to ride in as the, as the owner. He just came to go and check what yeah. the, the workers are doing. Yeah. He didn't come to check for Ruth. He didn't know Ruth. Mm. And, and he looked at her and he told her, ah, the Lord bless you. It's just normal greeting. And he said, the Lord bless you. How is everything going today? Overseer. Overseer. Ah, people are working. He said, who is this girl? You know why? Because she was different from the others. She, she was not Israelite. She was Moabite. Mm. So the, maybe the dressing and she, you could tell she was not. So that's why he pointed out. Say, who is this uh, stranger that is uh, walking with the reaper? Ah, this is the reaper. Ah, oh God, he's that Moabitish girl that came with Naomi. You know, that came out of the country of Moab and everything. Say, ah, ah. They had heard the story. He was not planning to marry her. That was not on his mind. He was just, ah! He said, come, 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 come. Ah, you are that girl, eh? I've heard about you. I've heard about you. What you did was very good. Hmm? You came to look after your mother-in-law. All right? He eh? said, the Lord will give you a full reward. All right? He said, now nah, he gave her an instruction. He said, abide with my maidens. 
He said, abide and don't go to another field lest they attack you. If you don't understand, you don't understand. You know, when you read things in King James, you don't really get the full story. You see, back in those days, hmm? during the harvest, young girls would go out and harvest. If you go in a far field where there is nobody, if a young man sees you and like, he will just rape you. That's why, go and check the Bible. The Bible says that if you are inside the town yeah. and the girl is raped, he said the two of them will be stoned. He said, but if it's inside the field, because she shouted and nobody was able to save her, that is only the man that will be punished. So that was what Boaz was saying. Boaz was saying, ah, stay here in my field and stay close to my reapers. Don't go to another field though. Because if you go to another field, you can be attacked. Stay here and you'll be, and you'll be, and you'll be fine. And of course, you know, and ah, Ruth was touched. She said, ah, you've spoken nicely to me. You've spoken, you've touched my heart. And I'm not an Israelite. Seeing I'm not like one of the other people. And he said, it has been fully showed me all that you did. And the Lord, who's under whose wings you have come to trust, he says he will give you, you know, he will give you a full reward. And he, will, he was just talking nicely. And prophetically. But even though he did not know at the time. Where God leads you, just it's not just something that just happens. Mm. Be careful. Mm. Another message for another day, but let me just say it. You know, a lot of people, God plants them somewhere, then they go to another field, then they get raped by Babylon. They go in our field. And then somebody rapes them. Spiritually speaking. Then you know what they bring forth? Bastards. You know in my note. Babylon spirit. Because they did not abide. You see, you know where you should abide? Where your heart was. Yes. Not the one that you thought with your mind. Mm. Where your heart was. Yeah. I can look at all of you here. Look at Larry. Look at Warren. Look at uh, um, uh, Ruda. Is the harp. Amen. You first heard me in my degree. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. She was a youth. Were you youth, youth copper? Was in university? No, I was working. You were working, yes. I went to, somebody invited. It was during um, MKO. Yeah. 993. Yeah, I was there. And they said everybody was going to die. Mm-hmm. Nigeria was going to scatter. My wife cried and cried. Said, "Hey, yo, lost my degree." <laughs> I said, "Don't worry, I'll be fine." I went to my degree to go and preach for Full Gospel Businessman Fellowship. That was when Ruda first heard me. Her heart. Then she now came back to Ibadan, met her husband in the second. You see, these are things you can't. And then you want to go to another field. Because they said, sons of Isika. Mommy, Dini, you're prophetic, prophetic. Sons of Isika, sons of Isika. It's the son of Isika that's going to save you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, and it was that was where Ruth met her destiny. So when she got up, she now told Naomi, "Ah, she was just telling you know you know how women talk. She was just gisting. Ah, praise God! Oh, today you know I went to one field and one man called Boaz, you know, and they gave they allowed me to to harvest with them and I brought some corn and something for you. Ah, ah now we say Boaz, Boaz, kilo you know, Boaz." Ah, <laughs> is he near? He's near. Watch this. Naomi would not have known the significance. Sorry, Ruth would not know the significance without Naomi. Listen to your oversight. What looks ordinary to you may have a spiritual connotation. 
You won't recognize it, but your Naomi will. Hmm. So Naomi tells her, Ah, the man is a near kinsman. He says, Stay there. Don't go anywhere else. So she stayed there until the end of the barley harvest. Wow. Wow. Naomi didn't say anything to her initially. She just, just stayed there. So she was going every day. She was harvesting. She was just working. She was watching her faithfulness. So when it was close to the time of harvest, Naomi said, Come. I want to. What you have done by leaving your father and your mother. Come on, God's going to reward you. He said, now, Boaz is going to reap his harvest tonight. He said, watch this. Wash thyself. Mm. Last week we were talking about cleaning. Wash with the blood, wash with the word, wash, wash by the spirit. And put on thy raiment. As righteousness. He said, then go and mark the place where the man is going to lie down. Hmm? Mark it. Then once he has eaten and he has drunk and his heart is merry, so go and uncover his feet. Which means find out how he walks. He said, and then he will tell you what you will do. Simple obedience. She said, All you tell me, I will do. And she did. She washed herself. Boaz came. They said, well, you know, in those days, they have electricity. So they didn't know who was who. It was in the night. You know? So he went to go and lie down. So she marked where he was going to lie. She went, lay down, and covered his feet. The Bible said, The man got up at me and he was afraid. Ah, who is next to me? So I found there was a woman. He said, I am loose. He said, do the work of a kinsman. Mm. Ah, the man was impressed. He said, wow. He said, you've not even gone after young men. Because Boaz was older than her. Mm. You know, you've not misbehaved. He said, okay. I know what you want me to do and I will do it. He said, but there's a kinsman that is nearer than me. So, in the morning, I will ask him if he can do it. If he can do it, praise God. If he can't, I will do it. Quite a long story short. That's how Boaz married Ruth. And Ruth became the father of Obed. Who became the father of Jesus. Who became the father of David. Simple obedience. She could have messed it up by going to another field. The field of the fatherless. Where they have removed the landmarks of the fathers. No landmarks. No restrictions. No discipline. People want the field of the fatherless. There is there are no landmarks. You can just do what you like. But you will never meet Boaz there. I have not started my message. <laughs> you know in the notes. Mm. Online, sir. <laughs> I'm about to start the message now. <laughs> Now, it will say parts, joints, and bands. Let's start with parts. Every single one of us is a part in the body of Christ. Another better word is member. Member. Every single one of us. The body of Christ is not scripture, pastor, Christian center. The body of Christ is not redeemed Christian church of God. The body of Christ is not winners. The body of Christ is not covenant. The body of Christ is not four square. The body of Christ is not assemblies of God. The body of Christ is not Anglican. The body of Christ is not Catholic. The body of Christ is not Baptist. It's not Methodist. 
is a spiritual organism. Amen. In the spirit, there is no type. There is no where well, this scripture pastor, this is uh, redeemed. There is none of that. All that is man. In the body of Christ, we are different parts interconnected. And it is where God places you <laughs> that you will flourish. Mm. It's not necessarily where you choose. And even if you choose where you want to choose, your connection in the spirit is still in the spirit. Amen. Amen. There's no you can do about that one. Mm. Yes. You can move physically, yes, but your spiritual connections remain the same. Yes, hey. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Uh, by the time I finish, you will understand. So we are all parts in the body of Christ. Give me Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, to start with. All that rules were just introduction. Ephesians chapter 4. Now, this is a very, 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 this is a spiritual MRI. A spiritual X-ray. Oh, CT scan. A God through the Apostle Paul, by revelation, he gives us an insight into the inner workings of the body of Christ, of the church. So from whom? The whole body. Are you a part of the body? Yes. Let's see your hand. Give me a wave offering. Okay. If, if the guy next to you is waving their hand, say, that scripture is talking to you. Now put your hand down. In this one, there is no exceptions. It's the whole body. I don't care whether you are in Tokyo, whether you are in um, uh, London, whether you are in Nigeria, you know, whether you are in Kaduna or whether you are in Abuja, it's the whole body. Amen. From whom? From whom? The, whole the whole body. Fitly joined together. Hmm. And compacted by that which what? Every joint supply. I'm going to come back to that. According to the effectual working in the measure of what? Don't tell anybody, they just spoke to you. You are a part of the body of Christ. And you're supposed to be working effectually. Sadly, many Christians aren't. And I'm going to explain. Every part, every part should be working effectually. Make us Increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. There is an inner working of in the body of Christ that is supposed to, sadly it doesn't in many cases, very sadly, but it, you know, it is supposed through the effectual working and measure of every part, it's supposed to edify the body in love. But alas, alas, many times this, this doesn't happen. And that's why you have so many sick members. And people who are very ineffective spiritually. The Apostle Paul talking about this, we're going to be taking communion next Sunday. He said, he said for this cause, many are weak. Many are sickly. And many die prematurely, not discerning the Lord's body. They don't understand. They don't have an insight into the workings of the body of Christ. Yes, sir. This message is so important. Now, give me Colossians 2 verse 19. Then I will begin to make definitions. This, like I said, I've never heard this message before. I mean, I've, I've known a few of the things, but I've never seen it with such clarity that God showed it to me. And he said, he said because, it's, you know, it's an unveiling. You know, it's, it's a removing of a seal. Because we're going to need this understanding moving ahead. 
not holding the head, from quench all the body. Exactly the same thing said in Ephesians. Ephesians says the whole body. Same thing here. By what? Joints and bands. Having what? Nourishment ministered. What? Knit together. Make it. Increase. Increase it rather with the increase of God. Ephesians says it defines itself in love. Same thing. God is love. So you can say increase with the increase of love. Anywhere you see God in the Bible, don't put love. You get a new revelation. You know, God does not, love does not define love. God. It is God who defines love. It is God who is love. It is not love who is God. See, what your own idea of love, is, it is God who is love. So it is God who defines what love is. If God says this is what love is, that's what love is. Amen. Not what you think or what you want. It's what God says. Amen. That is why you cannot walk in love if you don't know God's word. Amen. Because it is love, God that defines love. Amen. But don't let me get, I'm not talking about that this afternoon. Now, let's begin to define. Before I, I go into, into, into the spiritual definitions, let's first of all look at the natural body. Our body, this is a professor of vet medicine. This one here is medical. This body is very complex. The physical body. You know, I, I can't get into too much something, but I want to look at two there are many, you have many systems in the body. Amen. You know, but I just want to look at two of them. The nervous system and the circulatory system. Amen. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. Professor Dakmotu is there looking at me. As a professor of uh, gynecology. Look. Your entire nervous system is, is an electrical is a bioelectrical complex system that all things are interconnected. So if something happens in your, you know, there's an electrical, is electricity. It goes from your brain, goes down the spinal cord. Then it enters into one of the nervous, into the, into the branches. Every single one of them is touching muscles and tissue. And that is why when a signal is sent from the head, it goes, Pew! speed of light. Well, almost. <laughs> a speed of electricity. So you feel it instantly. Those nerve centers do not operate in isolation. The one that is coming from the head must pass through the spinal cord. Yes. Abio? Yes. Doc? Yes. Thank God for dogs. <laughs> but it doesn't stop in the spinal cord. The spinal cord will transmit. S send the message, you know, so there is a relay. It goes, pum, 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 pum. Let one of those nerve endings fail. Wow. And you won't feel what you should feel. That's what happens when you have a stroke. You will not have stroke in Jesus' name. Yeah. <laughs> I don't <breathe. laughs> You won't have a stroke. You won't have a stroke. <laughs> it was like my money stroke. <laughs> but that's what happens when a stroke happens. Something goes wrong. Some signal, it's, it's, it's probably not wrong in the brain. Maybe it's in the spinal cord or one of the nerve endings. But at the end of the message, at the end of the day, the message does not get transmitted. So that part of the body does move. It has lost contact with the head. So 
that part of the maybe it's the finger that cannot move or maybe it's the leg that cannot move so that part of the body for to all intents and purposes for all, during that particular period of time becomes useless you will not be a useless member of the body of Christ. There are so many members of the body, they are not receiving any signals from the head. So, that part is not working effectually. It should be, but it's not. Because something has happened. Let's leave nervous system. Let's go to circulatory. It's the blood. We tell you, the doctors will tell you, you see this body? It's a wonderful machine. Amen. 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 The only person that could have made it is God. He's mm. one of the, as far as I'm concerned, one of the evidences of God. Our doctors will tell you, you know, you, because, you know, this is not an anatomy class. So, <laughs> and I did it, but it was many years ago, Pastor Larry. I was good in biology. Just, physics was just better than medicine, that's all. <laughs> my, my brethren will they want to argue, but let's see me in my office after service. <laughs> but seriously, you know, you have the, the heart, the iota, and all of that. Then you have the arteries and the, you know, the arteries and the veins. You know the one that carry the oxygen, the, the oxygenated blood, the ones that take it back, and you have got the circulatory system. But it's it's not as simple as that. You got capillaries. You have got tiny, 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 tiny blood vessels. They are all in. It's a very vast network. Very vast and complex. And everything has to be working properly. Yes. Abby Doc? Yes, sir. Everything. If you take one blood vessel, just a small capillary, and block it. Ah, mama, you get to get it. While I did. That part of the body will start to die. It's called to atrophy. Because it is no longer receiving oxygen. Because it is the, it is the oxyhemoglobin. Did I get it? Yes. Did he still there? I don't remember all of it, but... Even the children are glad. It carries the oxygen. The oxygen, you know, and then it comes back, goes into the heart. That's when you breathe. Then oxygen is taken from the air. It goes back, it oxygenates it, and then sends it around again. Mm. Can you imagine some stupid blood vessel? Mm. Oxygen is coming, oxygenated blood is coming, you know, from the heart. It comes down one of the main arteries. It gets into maybe the leg. And it wants to uh, supply oxygen to this particular part. And this one says, I don't like you. I'm not receiving any oxygenated blood from you. Hey, Riboshe will mean church. Koyeni. Koye. Koye. He doesn't understand. Hey, we get it from the head. It's from the head. Yes. Yes. It's from the heart. But it is a defined pathway. Yes. You must get through that pathway. Yes. You don't have a choice in the matter. <laughs> Otherwise, you stop getting oxygen. And if you stay without oxygen for a 
long enough. All the tissues, all the something will start. They will, it doesn't. It doesn't happen overnight. It begins to atrophy. It begins to die. It doesn't die in one week. See, cry. Many Christians are in a state of atrophy. Because they've cut off their oxygen supply. You know why? They don't like the iota. I can't stand that left ventricle. You see, it sounds silly to us, but that's exactly what we do with members of the body of Christ. For God has set some in the church. And there are some things that are coming. It's from Jesus, so, but it's coming through them. <laughs> and you say you don't like it. You will die. You will not die in Jesus' name. <laughs> I'm not preaching religion. I'm preaching reality. That is why the Apostle Paul likens the body of Christ to the human body. Back then, they did not have as much knowledge of human as we have now. So we now even know that what he was saying is even far more serious. Far more serious. The only way Paul could say is that the eye has no need of the, the head, has, which is all true, but it's deeper than that. When you consider the interconnections of the nervous system and the circulatory system, especially. There's also the physical anatomy, the bones and all of that. But let's leave all of that one alone. That's just, you know, those are two fundamental ones. Now, having said that, let's get back to the Holy Ghost. Let's get back to the Bible. You know, what is a joint? I've never heard this before. A joint is a connection between two members of the body of Christ at the thought level. Wow. At the thought level. Let me show you a joint. First John chapter 5 verse 16. If anybody see his brother sin is sin which unto death, he shall ask. That's a joint. Mm. A joint is wherever two or more members, once there's an intersection, mm. once you, once the Holy Ghost brings the thought mm. of somebody to your mind. Mm. It may be your wife, it may be your children, it may be your pastor, mm. it may be your flock, mm. it may be your house girl, it may be whoever. Mm. You know, so long as they're Christians and they're the body of Christ. If that thought comes to you, mm. that thought, that connection mm. between you and that person forms a joint. Functional joint. Mm. A functional mm. joint. Mm. Prof. You know what a joint is supposed to do? Supply. He said, every joint supply. What does the joint supply? The mercy of God. Giving two vital things. The blood of Jesus and the life of God. Do you know how many joints the body of Christ are not working? That's why the body looks paralyzed. That is why, that is why we are so ineffective. Healing the nation. A great number of the people, they are not, there's, no, there's, there's nothing, the joints aren't supplying anything. So that, pa- can you imagine somebody who is paralyzed? That's why I use the natural illustration. Who half the body is not working. It's just in the body. They bath for him every day. Thank you, darling. <laughs> I was going to translate. Thank you for reminding me. He's, he can't raise his leg. He can't raise his hands. He's lying on the bed. He can't go out. He's not dead. He's alive, but non functional. That's why this message is so critical. Every joint should be supplied. 
So when a thought comes to you, First John chapter 5, verse 16. First yeah. John chapter 5. If this is all in the spirit mm. and is at the thought level. Mm. So how does God connect me with my wife? A thought comes to me about my wife. Oh, I see her do something. I must supply her. Oxygen. Blood and life. A thought comes to me about my children. A thought comes to me about my pastors. A thought comes to me about whoever. And maybe someone I don't even know. Maybe it's in the airport. And somebody does something. And a thought comes to me. It's a joint. I must apply. At the thought level. Lord have mercy on them. Give life to them. Cleanse their sin. That is why the blood of Jesus speaketh of better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of Abel cries for vengeance. The blood of Jesus cries for mercy. Give the Lord a clap offering. There are saints in Japan I don't know. I've never met them. I probably will never meet them until when we get to heaven. I cannot have a joint with them. I don't know them. I can only have a joint with saints I am conscious of. That is where this truth has a local application. Say, there are saints now in, in Siberia. I may never meet them. You and I may never meet them until when we go to heaven. So you will never see them sin. <laughs> Maybe you meet them if they are hostess on a plane going to St. Petersburg or somewhere. <laughs> you know, occasionally. But so they, they, are, they are saints that you may never connect with while you are on the earth. But the ones you connect with, it is incumbent upon you to supply. Let's leave joints. And let's go to bands. What is a band? Spiritual definition God gave me. A band is a interconnection between two or more saints through praying in the spirit. When you pray in the spirit, watch this. The joints supply the blood and the life, but the bands supply power. Nourishment. Power. You see, I've said, I've preached this before. You know, I did for years, I used to say all this. I didn't, I didn't really have understanding, deeper understanding of what I was talking about. You know, Zoe is the life of God. Dunamis is power. They are not exactly the same. One is a derivative of the other. The, 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 the fundamental substance is life. Yes. When life is processed in the, human, in the heart mm. and it comes out of the mouth, it comes out as dunamis. Amen. It is dunamis that creates. Amen. So when you connect with another Christian in the body of Christ and you pray for them in the spirit... That connection at that point in time forms a band. And what the band conveys is power. Now, when you have a, a body of saints and Christians where the joints are working properly and they are supplying blood and they are supplying life and the bands are working properly and they are supplying power, you know what's going to happen? It will edify itself be in love. love. Yes. And the body will increase with the increase of God. The saints will get strong. Amen. I'll soon close. <laughs> so, I'm going back to my notes now. I've covered practically most things. Now let's 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 look at some more. 
Scripture, let's, let's put some scripture behind this. I've given you the scripture for the joint. Let me give you the scripture for the band. It's Ephesians 6.18. Do you notice it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication of the Spirit with all supplication for all saints. A few saints. All saints. Some saints. All saints. Now, that's the difference between the joint and the band. See, the joint is people you know. They're conscious of. The band, God can connect you anywhere. Yes. Glory. I can be in Nigeria and I can be praying in tongues, the scripture pastor, and God can be supplying to a saint, power to a saint in Siberia, I don't know. That's why the Holy Ghost retains sovereignty over praying in the spirit. This is a great truth. He, re- he does it. That is why you do not know what you are praying for. It's deliberate. Because if you know, you mess it up. Yes. If you know, you, you won't pray for your enemy. But if you are praying in tongues, you can pray for your enemy. God won't take your permission. He will just take the power and divert it. He will just take the power and he will just divert it. Let me just give you a little this thing. You know, we're going to come to different kinds of bands in a minute. It's just like inside the physical yeah, body. Yeah, sure. There are different ligaments. Yes, sir. Some are stronger than others. Yes, Correct? Yes, sir. Ah. They will respect me today, all these doctors. <laughs> Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost is. You know, even Holy Ghost can teach us anatomy. He's teaching me, he's teaching me all the things of the physical body. And I haven't read these things for 30, 40 years, but I still remember a few things. You know, but seriously, when you begin to pray in the spirit, you know, God begins to, there's a band, it's a connection. It's for that time of praying in the spirit. It's not permanent. But there, because we're, we're supposed to be, now we don't. Praying always. So the body should constantly be full of bands. Supplying power, just like the circulatory system is supplying oxygenated blood. Now, watch this. God told me this years ago, you know, and I'll share with you. I won't preach this as doctrine like Paul said, you know, I will not say the Lord said, but, you know, I think I have the Spirit of God. Do you know God tithes your prayers? Oh! Father, in Jesus' name, I'll come to pray about my finances. You're going to finance, so my yato. You know, we're going to probably pray finance in this three day fast. Eh? One face. Ah, you see, brother. Paul Selebega. Shepara, para, para. All right, make people go grab my big finance, they got it. He has forgotten that there is somebody who is controlling the utterance. So all your gra gra for finance, God will just take a certain portion of it and divert it to Siberia. For some saint who really needs it. And not to be used on your own, you consume it on your own loss. Even our prayers are taxed. That is why, for every time you pray in the spirit, a certain portion is taken out for the body. It's for all saints. Distributed as it sees, as the Holy Spirit sees fit. Now, let's go to different kinds of bands. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 15. There's captains over tens. There's captains over hundreds. Fifties, hundreds, same thing. And there's captains over thousands. Hmm? So that tells you the capacity of the band. Mm. It's just like it's a physical body. Mm. But not all blood vessels are the same width. Sure, Correct? Sure, sure. You got the main iota. Yes. Oh. Then they, 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 they are the smaller blood vessels. 
Then there will be tiny, tiny capillaries. They are all distributing blood. And all of them are essential in their place. But some can stop temporarily and nothing will really happen. And some will stop and you die. Am I talking to anybody here? Nothing must happen. Nothing! Major blood vessels. In the military, when you go to war and the soldier is shot, the first thing the medics check is where did it hit? Is it a clean wound? Because sometimes it's a clean wound and it didn't affect any major blood vessel. If it hits a major blood vessel, they must apply something immediately because the person will die of loss of blood. One of the, one of the, the good trained something, immediately they would notice that they would tie that thing and then maybe use something to, because they, and then they bring blood immediately and they begin to transfuse. Correct? Whereas there's some other wounds, you just patch it up. It's okay. We are not the same in the church. God gave me a vision in 1982. I was a young Christian. And, you know, people were shouting, are you an apostle? Are you a prophet? Are you a teacher? The Holy Ghost. I still remember, I just got back, I got back from America. I go to America for some weeks, like two months. You know, I went to Kelly Hagen's Bible school. I didn't attend the school as a registered student, but I used to go with some friends that I stayed with. So when I go back, I cannot forget that afternoon. It was not a house in Agbo, not the one where science scripture was, the one me and brother and Miko, you know. <laughs> I just tell you a joke on the side. You know, we had different places. There was one boys quarter we used to stay in face me face. That was Egypt. Then from there we moved to the wilderness. <laughs> eh, near water resources. Eh, and then we moved to Bodija, the promised land. <laughs> well, we, eh, we, all, we all laugh about it now. You know. So, you know, we were still in the wilderness. <laughs> we didn't have any furniture. We used to sit on Jerica. True story. Brother Fred, that they go, everybody used to come and visit us. Yeah, David, they, 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 oh, everybody, you know, everybody would come there and buy tapes and buy Ken Hagen books and all of that. I always have a great time. You know, those days, our hearts were pure. Amen. Material things didn't disturb us. Amen. We were sitting on Jerry Khan. Brother Emiko and I would sleep on the same bed. There was only one bed. And sometimes, you know, Brother Yemi Ayodele would come and they put me in the middle. <laughs> Our joy was not based on the bed. It was not based on the jerry can. It wasn't based on the chairs. And in all of that, we were getting revelation knowledge. So, the Lord began to speak to me. He said, forget all this title thing. He said, your position in the body of Christ is not static. It is dynamic. And he gave me, it's like, a, you know, it was a revelation. I didn't see a vision. It was an inner revelation, but it was so clear. He said, saints are getting born again every day, and saints are dying and going to heaven every day. So the relative position in the body is changing dynamically with time. Don't box yourself in. Hallelujah. Mm. 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 Then he showed me something else many years later. If you look at the anatomy of the physical body, for example, you find that the foot, you know, this place is for walking. Yes, sir. Foot soldiers. Evangelism moving all over the whole place. When you move up, you start moving to the loins, the reproductive organs. It becomes it's a different ballgame. This is giving life. If something happens to the leg, like a short hair, it's not going to be very, very but if something happens here, then if you move up, you move to the respiratory system and the heart, nothing must happen there. Mm. Your relative position in the body changes as you grow spiritually. So initially you are down here somewhere. And over the years, if you grow, and you should grow, your position becomes more important. As you develop spiritually, your position becomes more important. And the closer you get to the head, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ the more strategic you become. 
One day the Lord said to me, I said, Lord, I said, you know, these things are really true. You know, I was just thinking, meditating and all that. He said, have you noticed that the government is on the shoulder? It's on the shoulder. That's the thing that is closest to the head. The government is not in the feet. Mm. Be careful, though. Because you don't know who you are talking to. He may be your iota. Then you say you don't like them. And you have a wrong attitude. You're just blocking major blood supply. Captains over tens, captains over hundreds, captains over thousands. Let's put scripture behind this. As I begin to close. Am I helping anybody here? All right, let's look at them one by one. All right. Look at uh, captains over tens. That's Ephesians 6.18. All of us, any Christian who is praying in the spirit, some measure of power is being taken from his prayers in a band and connected to other Christians. This is true for everybody. Some, some Christians have that. Every Christian, rather, has that. In particular, you know, um, we're supposed to pray for one another and build one another up in the spirit. You know? So when you pray in the spirit like that, the Holy Ghost will divert, not all of it, but a certain percentage, I don't know, I'm not God, you know, maybe 10%, maybe 5%, I don't know, you know, to others, and then the rest is for you, for whatever it is you're praying about, you know. So every Christian has that. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, the whole this Bible, eh? hmm. I respect it so much now. No wonder why he said, he said, if a man cannot rule his house, he said, how can he take care of the church of God? The guy that cannot be captain over tens, how is he going to be captain over thousands? If what is coming out of his spirit cannot keep ten people in subjection, how can he keep a thousand people in subjection? He's banned with. <laughs> with. The capacity of his band is limited. So there is a limited amount of power he can transmit. Uh. That came just now. <laughs> it's not in my notes. <laughs> bandwidth. But it's true. Bandwidth. That's why your internet always does like. <laughs> you know, when your, 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 your backbone is such that the bandwidth is very narrow. So there's so many millibits of self information you can get, so your, your, your thing is not stable. Then you get to England and America, and the guy is giving you 40 megabytes. Pew, bam! Bandwidth. Spiritually, it's the same thing. Then captains over hundreds. I would call these local pastors. Local pastors. You see, every church should have a local pastor, like a senior pastor. I call it local because it's local to that particular body. He, he has a very important job. That local pastor is a main supplier. If he understands his job. He is a main supplier. So many bands are connected to him. He is not like the ordinary who just have maybe about 10. He's probably hundreds, 500. And he must be praying on a regular basis, you know, you, you know, daily, weekly. And the power that is coming out of him is going through the bands. He says, My little children, of whom I travel in earth until Christ be formed. Then the third level, these are universal. Mm. They are not local. Mm. Apostolic mm. and prophetic. Mm. Thousands are connected to them. 
sometimes millions. I connected to them and what is coming out of them is being used to feed the other members of the body of Christ to cause growth. To bring them up to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Isaiah chapter 32 verses 1 and 2. Behold, a king not a prince. So. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm talking about bandwidth here. Yes, sir. Capacity. Shall reign in righteousness and what? Princes shall rule in judgment. Verse 2. A man. Yes, now that king is a man. Shall be what? Yes, from the wind. Ever say one. one. A covering from the temple. Ever say two. As rivers in a dry, water in a dry place, ever say three. three. As the shadow of a great rock in a weary land, ever say four. four. Look at all the things he's providing. So the capacity has to be able to supply rivers, is supplying covering from the tempest, is supplying a hiding place from the wind, is supplying the shadow of a... These are different metaphors, but he's talking about the protection, the power that is coming out of the hearts of universal leaders. That is why the Bible says God has set some in the church. I stumbled, I got to close, I stumbled on a great truth as a young Christian. I didn't know. I was just being obedient. I was just doing my harp. <laughs> I was just being led and it, 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 it worked for me. It's quite a long story short, this is what happened. I was in the UK. I was going to this Assemblies of God church, pastored by Pastor Porter and his wife. It's a small church. I say small, maybe 200. We're not up to 200. We're about 70. You know, it was a relatively small church. We had young people, Americans, Nigerians, Jamaicans, all kinds of people, and all of that. To go a long story short, then I got to know about Kenneth Hagen and E.W. Kenyon at first. Later on, Kenneth Copeland, that was much, much later. But initially, it was E.W. Kenyon and Kenneth Hagen. So I started feeding from their books and from their tapes. But I would go to church and I would listen. My pastor would preach on Sunday. We have Wednesday Bible study. I'll listen to my pastor. I will learn. I will contribute, you know, and all of that. And of course, I was praying in the spirit. I was obeying instructions, what I was told. And then I was paying my tithe to the, my local church. And then I was sending offering to Kenneth Hagin and all these different organizations and all of that. I didn't know what I was doing. I was hooking up with all the resources of the body. Now watch this. You've got people that are set in the body that are used by God universally. Amen. Yes, sir. That is God has set some in the church. Let me tell you something. You cannot learn anything about faith in this generation if you don't hear from Kenneth Hagin or somebody that heard him. Yes, sir. Go and write it down. Amen. Kenneth Hagin, Derek Prince, Young Cho, some of these initial fathers, you, you, can't, you cannot get it anywhere else. Can I Copeland learn it from Kenneth Hagin? I learned it from Kenneth Hagin and Kenneth Copeland. You learned it from me, but you learned it from Kenneth Hagin. That's your iota. The main blood vessel supplying to the rest of the body. God told me this years ago. He said, pattern after Kenneth Hagin. That's when I was thinking of starting a church and branches and all that. I said, oh, God said, don't go there. It's all system. He said, look at Kenneth Hagin. I said, yes, Lord. He said, he has affected the body of Christ more than four square assembly of God. 
Church of God, all of them, all the denominations put together, and he has only one church, 300 people in Tulsa. It is not the man-made thing that works. It's the connection in the spirit. What came out, what was coming out of that man was feeding the entire body of Christ directly or indirectly. And many that didn't appreciate it. And some of them died because they began to atrophy and cut off their oxygen supply. So I stumbled on that truth. So you've got, you've got those at that level. Then you've got your local pastor. Then, watch this. Then you've got the interaction with the saints in a local body. Whether you're in the building committee, or whether you're in the horticultural committee, or whether you're in the choir. Yes, it's all interaction. There's a, there's a local leader there. It may be over 50, maybe over 20. There's something you're getting from him. So watch this. You're getting from the captains of a thousand, so to speak, the universal. You're getting from the local pastor, the local, you know, local um, senior pastor. Then you're getting from your local interaction with the saints. Then you're getting from God yourself. Amen. So you have four sources of nourishment. Four is God's number four. Balance. Then, you know, you are so wise. And you're so conceited. And you're so arrogant. And you say, I can hear from God myself. So you cut off three. Mm. I don't believe we can hear it. Exactly. One over four. You will die of Kwashoko. You will not die in Jesus' name. The one to start to go down. Yes, one over four. Most Christians are living on less than 25%. 25%. Some of them have a partial relationship with their local pastors or their local leaders. And when they say anything they don't like, they get offended. And once they get offended, you block the path. Mm. No wonder why there's so much kwashoko. Spiritual. Yeah. yeah. Big head. Stunted body. The head is big like that. You think of himself more highly. <laughs> more highly than the other. Only at Toby. But he's only eating Gary. No protein. No vitamins. No vitamins. No minerals. This is reality. Reality. This is not religion. I'm telling you the truth. So I didn't know what I was doing. So I was hooked up to all four. I was hooked up to Ken Hagen and E.W. Kenyon. I was hooked up to my local pastor in my church. I was hooked up to my local, you know, my local brethren. That was something. And then I was praying and reading the Bible myself. You know what happened? Within nine months, my pastor, white man, was going to travel. And Pastor Potter is not a small man, no. He used to be the secretary general of the Assemblies of God. There is nothing they do in the Assembly of God. He's the one who organizes it. All the great men of God have preached in our church. Long before I was born. Mm. Ken Hagen came. Uh, Young Cho came. Smith Wigglesworth came. Mm. All the top... Pre- because, you know, if, uh, when they were going to have an uh, Assembly of God convention, pa- pa- Pastor Potter is one of the brethren that organizes all the meetings and all the brethren. So they always come to his church. He told me so many stories. 1954, 19, 1930, you know, uh, 37, uh, this was before the war, after the war, 1948, all the great things you would tell me, I'll just be listening. And God had plugged me into proper pedigree. Mm. Mm. And I didn't know. So when he was going to travel in June, you know, he was going uh, to Italy, they were going to do an evangelistic campaign, and, you know, so he now called all the elders, the people who are old enough to be my father, you know, West Indians, you know, one American, two guys. He said, "Well, I'm away, brother Louis is going to do the preaching." I was shocked. I was black, and then I was the smallest. I'm not at 21. 
I was going to be 21 in May. Oh, I was 21. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because he had been watching me. You know, he's a wise man, an elderly man. He had been watching me and watching my faithfulness. And how I, I would go and visit old women in the old people's home. I would go to the shop, take my bicycle, go and buy groceries for Sister Starkey. Help this one, help that one. Hey, Pastor Potter wants to paint the church. I will come on Saturday. I will help them to paint the church. I was not trying to do anything. No. I was not trying to preach. Mm. I was just being faithful. Yes, sir. So he now said, he said, he said, while I'm away, Brother Luby is going to do the preaching. You know, and he told all the elders. Uh, of course, everybody submitted. So he now said, you know, that that's what's going to happen. So one of the elders, his name was Brother E. Banks. He's a J- J- Jamaican man. He had a daughter who was my age. But because I was fast, you know, she was at just finishing A-levels or entering, you know, university or something like that. You know, but she was my age. She was 20. I still remember. So Brother E. Banks said, Brother Luby! I've been in this church for over 40 years. I have never seen anybody grow as fast as you. It was not because I was smarter than anybody mm-hmm. else. I was just getting from all four. It was not because I was smarter. It's just the right nourishment. Amen. You want to grow? You want to grow? Yes, sir. You want to edi- increase with the increase of God? You want to be edified in love? Don't cut off any of your supplies. I, as your pastor now, I combine some things. I combine a local pastor. So when we first started scripture pastor, started in 84, I got to close. Was that in 1984? My first four years, I was just an ordinary pastor and teacher. All I taught was new birth, baptism of the Holy Spirit, healing, deliverance, prosperity. Ah, people loved it. Scripture pastor was the place to go. <laughs> Everybody rushing, rushing. 88. This is before Pastor Papa Ralph came up. 1988, you know, Brother Branks came and we did a conference. And I started preaching prophetic. I moved from an ordinary pastor and teacher to becoming a prophetic teacher. Joshua Generation. Man child company. Times and seasons. Ah, ah. People say, What will they lay you? That's when our problem started. <laughs> well, my wife will remember. Elijah company. The whole Elijah company. The, the tabernacle of Moses and prayer. I started teaching. God, God had moved me. God had moved me. So I moved from pastoral and teaching to prophetic. And with that, God came its own problems and all of that. But the supply to the body now moved up a notch. It was not just the ordinary pastoral and the, and the teaching. Now, many, many saints in many local bodies, do you understand? Most of their pastors, most of them only have pastoral. Some don't even have teaching. And that's all you listen to? You've got to hook up. God has set some in the church. Look for universal apostolic and prophetic ministries and let them complement what you are getting at the local level. That's why there are not many. You have Thousands of instructors, but very few fathers. I tell you the difference between an instructor and a father. Are you listening to me? An instructor, you can hear what he says and do it because it's in the Bible, but don't do what he does. A father, if you follow his example, he will transform you into what he's like. Big difference. Big difference. If you can't follow the example, they're not fathers. And father's birth, yeah. my little children yeah. of whom I travail in birth till Christ be formed in me. The bandwidth of fathers is far higher than those of just 
local leaders. And it's not scripture pastor, it's not redeemed. This is the way the body is structured. You like it, you don't like it. I got a clue. It was Rick Godwin who said this. One great prophetic teacher also. He said, God has set some in the church and you can't upset them. There are people in apostolic and prophetic offices and they feed the entire body. Amen. Amen. I give the example of Kenneth Hagin. And a good example, I see, of course, Kenneth Copeland. And there are others like that. You know, they are placed strategically in the body. And the things that is coming from them, if you don't get it, you can't get there, anyway. there is a level above which you will never grow. It will cap your growth. It's the way the body is designed. Joints, bands, and parts. Let us pray. Mommy, you want to share something? talk to God. Joints, parts, joints, and bands. Every one of us is a part. Or with any joint that comes your way, make sure you supply it. Amen. With mercy, blood of Jesus and the life of God. And then come to church regularly, pray with all kinds of prayers, pray so you'll be supplying a band, and you too will be receiving. Amen. Then the body, you know what's going to happen? The body will get strong. How good. How and how pleasant. It is for brethren to grow. You see, the joints maintain the unity of the spirit. Because they're always supplying blood and life. The bands supply power and cause the growth and the strength of the body. I gotta say this, I didn't say it in my preaching, but I gotta say it. Those who are faithful now in supplying joints and bands with the spirit with measure mm. with the earnest once you have been seen to be faithful mm. in little mm. of the earnest mm. when the spirit without measure comes they will carry the spirit without measure for he that is faithful in little will be also faithful in much it is the word of God so be faithful now with the earnest now, be faithful in the supply, be faithful in your bands, be faithful in receiving. So that when the time comes for the glory and the spirit without measure, you'll be able to go. Let's stand to our feet. Glory to God. Oh! I don't know if I've helped anybody. Look at Papa Hagen. Or Brother Copeland. You know, when God told me about Coco, uh, Hagen and Copeland in particular, you know... He said, they have only one church. No denomination. No branches. He was told me this, 1992. I was in Abidjan. I went to pray for my late friend, Wally Adekoya. And I was thinking of starting branches. You know, maybe I'll send Larry and Shokes to VI. VI, VI, VI. Oh, boys. Ah, well, VI, Lulu. It would have been the biggest mistake I ever made. Yeah, because you know, my daddy had a house in Victoria Island. So I was thinking, I have started planning in my heart. Maybe, okay, well, maybe we'll start something in VI, we'll rent the place. Daddy would let up, because my daddy would have let me have it, you know, then we could get a place. By now, we would have been the biggest. We would have gone, we would have eaten what we should not eat. And we would have died. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Oh, no, don't try. He says, it's a soul system. I never designed Israel to have a monarchy. He said, because if you have a monarchy, then the next king must be one of the sons of the present king, whether he's spiritually qualified or not. He said, it will produce Absaloms and Abdonijas. Don't touch it. And I've obeyed that commandment till today. And it was there, I didn't have to, he said, look at Ken Copeland. He said, look at Ken Hagen. One church, one ministry, but worldwide impact. His capacity, his bandwidth. His bandwidth. I don't think there is a Christian on the earth today 
that has not benefited from the Hagen ministry. Either directly or indirectly. Because is this, is, this, is, is this nervous circulatory system? You can't escape it. Look at them. Same thing we can co-plan. That's just one church. Eagle, Eagle Mountain Church. You know? And just there. You know? And all they just go on television. They preach. They teach. And that's it. But look at the impact. And then we have others. Plenty of noise, branches, no impact. That's how you can know who is who. Let's talk to God. Mm, no, I'll, I'll talk, I'll pray for them. On the Air has, has been, brought been brought to you by, by Christ, Christ Life, Life Ministries, Ministries, the outreach arm of the Scripture Pastor Christian Center. You can be a part of this program by becoming a fifth partner with Christ Life Ministries. For details, contact Christ Life Ministries, number 12, Oshutoku Avenue, Bodija Ibadan. You can also download our weekly messages from our website, www.spcconline.org, while our email address is scripturepastor at spcconline.org. You're welcome to worship with us at the Scripture Pastor Christian Center Auditorium, Polytechnic Road, Sango Ibadan. God bless you. Thank you.